In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the portable live streaming rig we've been using at our church. This setup has dedicated hardware for video switching, routing, recording, and encoding. When combined with the right cameras and broadcast mixing solution, this video rack produces phenomenal results for a church's live stream. So stick around to the end because I'll be diving into the details of this system and why I think this is a great route to go for any church wanting a professional, portable, and reliable live streaming rig. All of this coming up. All of the gear mentioned in this video will be linked below. If you'd like a convenient guide to all of our worship tech recommendations, download our worship ministry toolkit. For a little context, I lead worship at Mission Lakewood Church based in Colorado. We launched in early 2018 and we gathered for worship at a local high school, that is until the pandemic hit. We recently received word that we may not be able to meet back at the high school until late 2021. So from mid-March 2020 until mid-August 2020, about a month ago, we pre-recorded our services in my studio during the week, and we did a simulated live stream on Sunday morning using Restream. But about a month ago, we began doing a true live stream from the new venue where we're currently meeting at. It's a small wedding chapel a few miles away from the high school. So we've been using this rig that I'm about to show you for almost a month now. It allows us to capture a multi-camera live stream and publish it in real time to our church's website and our social accounts. We're still really dialing in this portable production rig, but as of September 2020, I'd say it's about 95% of the way there, and I don't imagine much of this setup changing in the foreseeable future. Here are the four goals I had in designing this rig. First, it had to be portable, meaning we could fit everything into a road case and put it on a table in the back of the room next to our sound console. The second goal is that it needed to have enough video inputs in our switcher so that this system could grow with our video team. We only have three cameras we're using right now, only one of them is manned, uh, but as our church and our production team grows, I want to be able to add cameras and operators without needing to upgrade our switcher. Next, this system needed to remove any video recording or encoding responsibility from our production computer. You can accomplish everything this rack does with software like like OBS, vMix, or Ecamm Live, but those programs can be very processor intensive, especially when you have more than one or two camera inputs. I wanted to build a system consisting of devices that all just have one job for each of them, whether it's switching video, routing, video recording, or encoding video. My final goal for the system is to have flexible video routing. In a worship ministry environment, you've got a ton of different video sources and destinations. I didn't want to deal with a bunch of splitters and dongles to make important video runs. So this system would have to require some sort of video hub. So those were the main goals I was after with this setup. And so far, this rig has completely nailed it. So let's take a look at the gear. First is the case. It's a 12U rack case by Gator. It has just the right amount of space without being too big. But I will warn you, this is a heavy case and it's best to have at least two people to move it around. I didn't want a case with wheels because I wanted to be able to just set it on a table like this. Mounted at the top of the rack is a Furman 9 outlet power conditioner that supplies power to all the devices within this case. Below the power conditioner, we've got the Blackmagic Design SmartView Duo rack mountable dual eight inch LCD monitors. The monitor on the left displays our multi-view and the monitor on the right displays our program feed. That's the final video going to our online audience. The SmartView Duo is a big reason why this setup is so portable. Obviously, we need to have an easy way to view our video feeds coming into our switcher, uh, but I didn't wanna have an additional monitor or screen that we had to set up and tear down every Sunday. I placed the SmartView Duo at the right height so it's easy for anyone sitting at the table to view the video
video feeds. Below the Smart View, we've got the Smart Video Hub 12 by 12 by Blackmagic Design. The Video Hub is perhaps the most underrated piece of video gear for churches. It has 12 SDI inputs and 12 SDI outputs. I can route any input signal to any output signal. I can also route the same input signal to multiple outputs. For example, out of our A10 video switcher, the program feed gets sent to three places. First, it's sent to the SmartView LCD on the right side of the SmartView Duo. Next, it's also sent to the HyperDeck Studio Mini Recorder. And then finally, it's sent to our streaming encoder. Leveraging the Video Hub also allows us to send the same ProPresenter video feeds to our in-house displays and to our video switcher. The moral of the story is you will not regret getting a Video Hub for your worship tech infrastructure. Structure. It will save you so much headache with video routing needs for both your live stream and your in-person video displays. Moving on, below the video hub sharing one U of rack space is the Blackmagic Design ATEM Television Studio HD and the Blackmagic Design HyperDeck Studio Mini. Here's why I went with the ATEM Television Studio HD. First, it has the minimum amount of video inputs to future-proof our system. Many churches today are tempted to purchase the A10 Mini Pro. I think the A10 Mini Pro is overrated. I'll probably catch some heat for that. Uh, but I've talked to so many church leaders out there who've purchased the A10 Mini only to realize that it's too small and they limited themselves with video inputs. Don't get me wrong, the A10 Mini has some amazing features over the television studio HD like the built-in encoding and streaming functionality. Uh, and recently they updated it to the A10 Mini ISO, which even has cool features like the ability to record multiple cameras into DaVinci Resolve, it's kind of overkill for our context. But until Blackmagic increases the video inputs to six or eight on the A10 Mini, I won't be recommending that switcher to churches. The reason I didn't spend more money on the ATEM Production Studio 4K is we simply don't need to record or stream in 4K. So the Television Studio HD is a great fit for our ministry. Another reason why I love this switcher is that it has two balanced XLR audio inputs on the back from our broadcast mix. We send multi-track audio from our Midas M32R into our Ableton broadcast mix template. We dial in our sound with some incredible plugins and then we send the main mix back to the M32R and then from the mixer, from the back of the M32, we send the broadcast mix uh, over XLR cables to the ATEM. I cover this setup in depth in our broadcast mix mastery course linked below this video. It's worth noting here the benefits of a hardware video switcher like the ATEM. Could you plug multiple cameras into your computer with a video capture card and do the switching in OBS, Ecamm, or vMix? Well, sure you can, but you don't see this set up in many professional environments because once you start asking your computer to switch multiple video cameras, you'll quickly chew through processor power. It's best to delegate these processes to various pieces of equipment designed for those unique purposes. It will greatly reduce the chances of failure, plus it will free your production computer up in your tech booth for other tasks like running presentation software or a DAW for your broadcast mix. And that's exactly what we do with the one laptop in our tech booth. It runs ProPresenter, LightKey, ATEM control software, and Ableton Live for our broadcast mix. I can run all these applications simultaneously on this one computer because we're not asking the computer to switch and encode and record video. That all happens in these hardware devices in this rack. I also wanna to touch briefly on our camera setup. We are currently running three camera angles. Our primary follow camera is a Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 6K with a 70 to 200 f4 IS Canon lens. On the side of the stage next to our keyboardist, we have a Panasonic GH5 with a 12 to 60 millimeter zoom lens. Our third camera is another Panasonic GH5 with a 15 millimeter lens, and it captures the entire stage as our safe shot. All of these cameras run into the video switcher with HDMI cables. Focusing our attention back to the gear rack, we have a HyperDeck Studio Mini to capture a 1080p H.264 video file of our worship gathering. It functions great as a backup of the service, and after worship, we edit it down to just the sermon video to upload separately to YouTube. Underneath the video switcher and HyperDeck, we've got the Sonnet 
Echo Express 3R Thunderbolt 3 expansion chassis for PCIe cards. I've made a video in the past about the benefits and purpose of using an expansion chassis for your computer in your tech booth. It helps eliminate dongles and adapters and it provides a much more robust solution for sending multiple video feeds from software like ProPresenter. In our scenario, I'm sending four video signals from ProPresenter to our video hub. The full screen presentation, lower thirds lyrics, a separate announcement screen, and then finally, our stage display. I already had the desktop Echo Express 3 and I loved it. That's why when I built this rack, I was thrilled to find a rack mountable version of the same expansion chassis. It connects to our production computer via one Thunderbolt cable and it gives us all of the IO we need for video signal, ethernet, and USB. Moving on, underneath the expansion chassis, we've got, well look at that, the like button. It's much like the one under this YouTube video. Simply press it until it turns blue and it will appease the god of YouTube, Susan, and her algorithm, increasing the chances of your church's live stream not being pulled down from YouTube for copyright violation. Results may vary. Next to the like button, we have the Ray encoder created by the team at Resi. Resi, if you're not familiar with them, is a resilient live streaming service that in a nutshell ensures your live stream will be delivered to your online viewers with zero buffering or interruptions, even if your internet connection drops out for a few seconds. They used to be called Living as One until apparently someone on their team realized that they're a software service, not a woman's Bible study. The Ray Encoder is an Intel NUC computer with preloaded encoding software. It can be controlled remotely from your web browser so long as the encoder has an internet connection. My favorite part is the scheduling feature. I have the encoder set up to automatically start our live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and our church's website around five to 10 minutes prior to our service time. So all our team needs to do is ensure that the countdown video is up and running on the ATEM program feed by that time, and it will be automatically streamed to our various platforms. The final very important piece of our video system is the Netgear 4G LTE broadband modem. We signed up for T-Mobile's wireless hotspot plan, stuck a SIM card into this modem that I bought on Amazon, and now we have 20 megabytes a second of upload speed over a cellular network. I don't put this in the rack because usually at church we like to put this by a window in the sanctuary just to ensure it gets a strong cellular signal. Is this setup ideal? Not really, but the venue we meet at has the absolute worst internet speeds with CenturyLink. We ran a speed test and it was only one megabit per second up not acceptable for live streaming. We need at minimum five megabits per second. So we've been using the LTE modem for a couple of weeks and we are on track to stay within the monthly bandwidth limit of 20 gigabytes. If you go this route with your portable streaming setup, make sure you don't turn on the modem until about a half hour before the service and then turn it off immediately uh, because your cloud services on your computer or anything that's on that network uh, could easily burn through the bandwidth without you knowing. It's happened to us before. So that completes all of the gear in this rack that's specifically related to our video broadcast. In a few moments, I'm gonna cover the additional gear you see at the bottom of this rack. But first, I wanna invite you to check out our advanced live streaming for churches online course. In this comprehensive training, I cover exactly how to assemble and operate this portable video rig. I break it down into simple steps anyone can follow, even if you have zero experience with video production. After establishing a foundation of understanding video style in the big picture of our broadcast video system, we dive deep into cameras, configuring presentation software, video routing, switching, and encoding. We even cover advanced strategies like automating video switching with software like Ableton Live. Click the link in the description to enroll in the course today. There are two more pieces of gear in this rack that aren't directly related to video, but they are still very important. First, we have our MIDI interface we use to send MIDI to and from our stage computer running Ableton Live tracks. We actually have two MIDI networks running. One is hardware-based using these iConnectivity interfaces, and for a backup, we use the Bohm network software. At the very bottom of the rack, you'll find a CalDigit Thunderbolt dock. In my pursuit to eliminate dongles from my life, I purchased a dock dedicated to this rack, so we would never, ever, ever 
run out of connections for our production computer that controls all of this. I have one Thunderbolt cable that runs to the CalDigit dock. The dock has our various USB devices plugged into it. It has a one terabyte solid state G drive to store all of our service recordings. It also has an SD card reader for us to offload the program feed recording from the HyperDeck Studio Mini onto the computer for editing. The CalDigit dock also has an additional Thunderbolt jack so we can actually daisy chain the Thunderbolt jack to the Sonnet Echo Express for our DeckLink Duo 2 video outputs, four additional USB ports, and additional Ethernet ports. One more piece of gear worth mentioning on this rack is the 16 port ethernet switch on the back side of it. Almost every device in this rack can connect to our local area network. That ensures the encoder can get internet from our LTE modem. It also allows us to run ATEM control software on our laptop to control our video switcher and even automate camera cues. And of course, we're using Dante Audio Networking to send audio from our mixing console to our Ableton broadcast mix template. You probably didn't think that one could pack so much nerdy gadgetry into such a small space. As I mentioned earlier, we're about 95% operational with this new production setup, but so far I'm loving the results. And here are a few clips from our service for you to see and hear it for yourself. With my These Sadducees, he says to them in verse 29 of Matthew 22, you're in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. You don't know God. That's what Jesus is saying. Like Jesus is looking at the good people, the professional good people in his day, and he's like, Would you like my team's help in building the right tech infrastructure for your church's worship ministry? Then consider joining Worship Ministry School. Our accelerator program has helped hundreds of worship and tech team leaders take their ministry to the next level. Visit worshipministryschool.com to learn more and get started today. Don't forget to check out the description of this video for links to the gear and resources I mentioned. If you found the video helpful, smash the like button and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your church.